Tabile. Tabile. Hey, how are you? I'm okay, I'm all right. You will tell me if all members have joined. Okay, Chair. As yeah. you and Member Goffman and Member. Yeah, so far it's only the two of you, Chairperson. I'll keep checking. Oh, there's Member Kanyile. Okay, you'll tell me, you know, that today I'm handicapped with the system. Okay, yes, Chair. <laughs> no okay. problem. Chair. All right. Member Kanile? Comrade Sox? Uh, good afternoon, Chair, and welcome. I'm sorry, man. I... I had muted, so I didn't get to respond quickly. Welcome to the safe the, the, the committee that is very, very safe, especially when you have a member of man on your side. You must know that you are very, very safe. Yeah, I could see. <laughs> okay, thanks, Com uh, member, member Kanyile. Today I'm handicapped. My camera is not working, my video. All of them, the phone and the laptop. We saw, we saw that about that, Chief. No, I, I, I phoned Tinyuko and then she said to me that I must bring them the, the, uh, them tomorrow. I said, I'll try my level best, even though I've got other commitments. No, it's okay, Chief, it's understandable. Okay. No, I'll, I'll, I'll massage Hoffman. <laughs> Jay, we'll, we'll show our faces in your state. Yes. <laughs> Chairperson? Tabile? According to the rules, Chairperson, a third of the committee members constitute a quorum. You are three. I don't know if Chair would uh, want to give the other members a few minutes to join or check and start the meeting. Can, can I check? Is the provincial commissioner here? Yes, Chairperson, they are here. They're here. The MEC? I don't see the MEC chairperson, but there's a senior management team of the department. Maybe they can also advise if the MEC will be joining. Okay. Uh, I think we should start uh, because there are some of the members who have requested that they need to leave the meeting, uh, I think, by half past two. Yeah, I think we should start. Uh, good afternoon, uh, honorable members. 
MEC in absentia and uh, your management team, provincial commissioner of the Houghton Subs and your team, support staff, stakeholders, and media house present. Let me first apologize. My video is not working. Both of the laptop together with the one of the phone, they've been affected yesterday. I hope my apology will be accepted because I wanted to show my face to those that they don't know me. I am Honorable Alfina Ngovana, popularly known as Gogo, the newly appointed chairperson of the Portfolio Committee. This is my first meeting as the chairperson, and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. I trust we are going to have a fruitful working relationship. Based on the event that have happened involving crime, it is a good thing there has been a, a relaunch of the highway patroller. I would like to show appreciation to the highway patrollers together with the Johannesburg North Crime Intelligence Unit on the swift action they have taken on the event that took place recently in our province. The meeting today, honorable members, staff, and the provincial commissioner will receive presentations from the Houghton Subs on their annual performance of the 2019-2020 financial year, as well as the third quarter crime statistics report of the 2021 financial year. We will further receive a presentation of the research analysis on the third quarter report of the Department of Community Safety for the year 2021 financial year. You are welcome to the meeting, honorable members, staff, and uh, the subs. Then I'll move to apologies. I will request Ntabisem to read apologies if there are any. Uh, uh, good afternoon, members. Good afternoon, um, uh, the Office of the PC and the D Office of the MCs. I've got uh, the following. Uh, I've got one apology from member Njaga Zanakha Dewe, who has been uh, booked off sick due to having had a car accident last week. That's the only apology that, that I have currently. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Ntabisen. Then I'll request uh, if, if there is any member who want to accept the apology on behalf of the committee. I will accept, Madam, Madam Chair. You will yes. accept any seconder? I second, Chair. Thank Honorable uh, Sokaile and Honorable Hoffman for the acceptance. Then we will move to the confirmation of the agenda. Honorable members, there is a request before I go to number three. There is a request that when we raise questions or when we speak, we should uh, switch on our video cameras because media is with us so that they should be able to see who's speaking. Confirmation of the agenda. I'm reading the agenda or Tabi saying, are you going to fly the agenda for us? Yes, yes, Chair Tabila will assist with flight of uh, doing the agenda for us. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Have you left flight the agenda for us? Member Sizagele, mute please.
I could chair, I have tried to share uh, the agenda. I'm not sure if members can see it. Not yet from my side. I don't know other members. Okay, I will try again. I think uh, it's going to have a problem because Ntavisen is the one that is uh, lighting things and I think if she can give her the powers to light the agenda, it will make her easy. There you go. There it goes. Okay, thank you. Honorable members, the PC, of the Houghton subs, that is the agenda for the day. The first one is opening and welcome. Apologies, confirmation of the agenda, adoption of the previous minutes, dated Thursday the 18th of February 2021. Presentation by the Houghton subs. 5.1, the annual report for the 2019-2020 financial year. 5.2, the third quarter crime stats report for 2021-2021 financial year. Then the sixth one, the presentation of the research analysis of the department. The seventh one, the resolution. The eighth, the NCOP matters nine correspondence, 10 other matters, 11 date of the next meeting. Can I have anyone to move for the agenda? I move chair uh, and I suggest that maybe there should be communication between Tabi Singh and, and uh, Tabile because what we have now on the screen is in Tabi Singh's information. But I move chair for the adoption of the agenda. Thanks, Honorable S. Sokaile. Any second? Uh, Madam Chair, um, I will second. Thanks, uh, Member Hoffman, for seconding for the agenda. Thanks. Then can we move to number four? The minutes of the previous meeting which was held on the 18th of February, 2021. Members, those are the, the, I'm presenting the minutes of the meeting of the 18th. Then I'll request members to do inputs with, uh, in the minutes before they can be adopted. I think, Chair, what we need to check, what I, what I think we need to check is I, if all the members that were there are present to adopt the, to move for the adoption of the minutes. I do move for the adoption, but I'm just worried that I know that it's your first meeting and then also, I, if I, my memory serves me well, Honorable Hoffman was not part of the meeting. I'm not sure and if... Members are member also. Malobani, uh, member, member Malobani, and honorable. I'm here, Sox. Yes. So I move, Chair. You, uh, honorable, so Kaila moved for. Chair. Thanks, I honorable. Second. Thanks, Chair, honorable. Chair, I second, but I think the, we really need to check the um, the grammar on. I think it is page three. Uh, I, 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 I've not opened my minutes because I'm using the same gadget uh, for, for this meeting and, and the one that I use for reading out minutes. But I'll request that Mchabi Seng check that and, and, and correct it. But otherwise, I second the, 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 
the motion of adoption of the minutes. Thank you for seconding and will request intervention to check page three. Which paragraph, honorable member Tizagele? The grammar on page three. Chair, I'll send her the I'll send her the message. Okay, thanks for that. The minutes are adopted with those corrections which will be done by uh, Tabisen. Thanks for that. Can we move to the presentation? By the Houghton Subs. I will request the MEC if she's, she has joined us to give us a, po a political overview in terms of the presentation before on a, a provincial commissioner, Mawela can do the presentation for us. MEC Mazibugo. If the MEC is not here, I'm handing over to the provincial commissioner, Mawela, to do the presentation on the annual report for the 2019-20 financial year. Then after that, we'll do the, again the second presentation of the third quarter. Then we'll take the questions inputs after the two presentations have been done. Thank you. Over to you, Provincial Commissioner. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson, and good afternoon to you, and good afternoon to all uh, honorable members of the committee. Thank you very much for the opportunity. With me here, I'm seated with um, uh, Major General Ndobu, uh, who is the Deputy Provincial Commissioner for Crime Detection. I'm with Major General Mbele, who is the Deputy Provincial Commissioner Management Advisory Services. Major General Ramporta, the Deputy Provincial Commissioner of Corporate Services. Uh, the Provincial Head, Corporate Communication and License, the Katia Peters. I have a who is the special commander of statistics and research. I have a captain military management, Captain Nico Papena, who is our Statistician. Uh, Honorable Chairperson and members of the committee, uh, through you, may I request Lieutenant Colonel uh, Ganesh to can take us through our presentation. I see there on the screen that is not our presentation. Our presentation can be uh, shown on the screen. Tavisen, can you get the presentation from the office of the provincial commissioner, please? Because what is in the screen is not their presentation. Uh, we are on it, uh, Okay, thanks. May, may I make a suggestion? I'm not sure if it will be acceptable. What okay. is the possibility of Mutabi Singh handing over the rights to present to the office of the PC so that it can also be easy for them to control from their side? Okay, it's fine. Uh, Mutabi Singh is accepted, honorable member. So, so can you let? We are trying to see what's happening here because uh, I don't remember sharing this thing, but then we are trying to remove it. 
It's been removed, I think, Shay. Okay. okay, but can you give yes. the office of the PC the right to 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 fly the the, the, the presentation? Please. They have. It, it is now on the screen, Shay. All right. Thanks, Ntabse. Okay, Shay. Uh, provincial commissioner, over to you. Good afternoon, Honourable Chairperson and Honourable Members of the Committee, the NEC for Community Safety, the Provincial Commissioner Gauteng, Members of the media. We don't hear you, ma'am. Captain, we don't hear you. Okay. The Provincial Commissioner... Okay, sorry, ma'am. Good afternoon, Honourable Chairperson and Honourable Members of the Committee, the NEC for Community Safety, the Provincial Commissioner Gauteng, Members of the media, all other senior officers or protocol observers. Thank you for the opportunity. Today I will be presenting the annual report for the 2019-2020 financial year. The presentation comprises of three sections, the financial program structure, financial program structure comprising of provincial expenditure, vehicle strength and vehicle fleet, the performance overview, as well as the actual performance against target fair financial program being that of administration, visible policing and detective service. The five districts within the province comprise of a total of 17,010 square kilometers. Districts form part of the three municipal areas, regions which contribute to 25.8% of the national population with an unemployment rate of 29.7% during the reporting period. The three financial programs, Program 1 has a strategic object objective to discourage all crimes, all crimes by providing a proactive and responsive policing service that will reduce the levels of Look at the book. To, re to regulate the overall management of the department and to provide a centralized support service. Program two, policing, to discourage all crimes by providing a proactive and responsive policing service that will reduce the levels of priority crimes. Detective services, to provide to the successful prosecution of crime by investigating analyzing evidence, thereby in increasing the detection rate of priority crimes. The total expenditure versus budget allocation. During the period under review, the province was allocated with a total budget of 1,509,800,000, of which expenditure was at 1,487,569,145. This translated to an expenditure rate of 98.53%. 1.47%, which amounted to 22,230,856 rand. Next slide gives us a breakdown of the expenditure per financial program. Program 1 administration was um, allocated 72,971,000 rand, of which there was a budget utilization of 99.71%, with an underspending of 0.29%. Program 2, Visible Policing, was allocated with 1 billion, 42 million, 36,200 rand, with a percentage utilization rate of 97.33% and an underspending of 2.67%. Detective Service, having a budget allocation of 389 million, 792,800 rand, and the percentage utilization was at 101.52%, with an overspending of 1.52%. Collectively, this led to the expenditure rate of 98.53%. The next slide will give you a broad overview of our expenditure, Honorable Chair, and the breakdown for store code classification. The bulk of the expenditure came from current expenditure, which includes compensation of employees for overtime, as well as goods and services, which had an allocation spent of 98.292%. Transfers and subsidies includes the licensing of motor vehicles and medical expenditure of detainees. 
of the the expenditure was 30, 35 million seven hundred and forty nine thousand nine hundred and two rand, which with an expenditure rate of ninety six point three eight percent. The payment of assets makes provision for building and fixed structures, machinery and equipment, transport assets, other machinery and equipment, and financial leases. And this had an expenditure rate of 97.56%, which will bring us to our budget expenditure of the 1,487,569,145 rand. Bulk of the expenditure was centered around fleet services at 70%. The reason for the delay was due to the process involved, uh, involved during the payment for the procurement of motor vehicles. Mr. Nell Spin, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, for the, during the period under review, the province had a total personnel spend of 31,967, of which 26,867 were Police Act employees and 5,000 were Public Service Act personnel. Vehicle fleets. For the year under review, the, vehicle, the province had a total vehicle fleet of 9,715. This, uh, this, uh, this is comprised of motor vehicles, boats, machinery, motorcycles, and trailers. The province had a reduction of 203 motor vehicles during the financial year in comparison to the previous reporting period from 9,550 to 9,347. There were an additional five motorcycles procured during the financial year and two trailers. The legend, targets achieved will be reflected in green and those not achieved in red. Honorable chairperson and honorable members, for the financial year, the province attained 64% of the targets with 36% not being achieved. Honorable chair, I would like to also highlight in comparison to the 2018-19 financial year, the province there has been an increase in performance from 58% to 64% as depicted on the next slide. This is an overview of over the MTS Program 1, administration, to regulate the overall management of the province and provides centralized support services Administration comprises of all entities in the support environment, human resource management, human resource development, supply chain management, financial management and administration, organizational design and strategic management, technology management services, inspectorate, legal and policy services, and corporate communication. Of the 40 performance indicators contained in program one, 28 targets were achieved and 12 were not achieved. This translated to a 70% achievement, 50% not achieved. For the first performance indicator, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, which speaks to the percentage of personnel in terms of the approved establishment, which had a target of 98%. This target was not achieved with a deviation of minus 2.71% and an actual achievement of 95.29%. The reason being, the, the advertisement of posts less rest with national head office. However, the province ensures the timely submission of these posts to head office. The next indicator is the percentage of staffing levels related relative to the approved establishment at the 12 high prime rate stations. Honorable chairperson and honorable members, I would like to pause here to enlighten the house on the these 12 12 prime weight stations that I will be reflecting on during the presentation. During the period under review, these stations would form part of the 12 high prime weight stations. They were Jobsonville, Hillbrow, Honeydew, Ivory Park, Johannesburg Central, Mamelodi East, Morocco, Victoria Central, Sochambouve, Sunnyside, Temba, and Tembisa. The target for the staffing at these stations were at 90, increased to 98%. This target was not achieved with a deviation of minus 1.93%. Also, there again, the reason being that the post advertisement of post is with, with national head office. Although this target was not achieved, Honorable Chair and Committee members, 
these 12 prime rate stations were stocked at 96.7%. Percentage of employees reached through proactive EHW interventions had a target of 87.19%. However, this target was not achieved with a result of 84% and a deviation of minus 3.19%. The reason being, the counterfeiting rules were altered during the first quarter, where it was ascertained that the same members were repeated, repeatedly being nominated for attendance of these programs. So that irrespective of the number of times an employee attends these programs, they will only be counted once. This also served to encourage other members to attend these programs. Percentage of disciplinary cases finalized within the time frame had a target of 98.5% to be finalized within 60 calendar days. This target was not achieved against a result of 94.63%. The unavailability of external witnesses during the time frame was an inhibiting factor in the achievement of this target. All 133 disciplinary investigations initiated in respect of corruption cases were finalized at 100%. All 176, also 100%, IAPA recommendations initiated were finalized during the prescribed time frame. This was ensured through regular accountability sessions with all stakeholders. IPAD-related disciplinary cases finalized within the time prescribed time frame had a target of 96.56%. However, this target was not achieved. Deviation of minus 5.99%. The cases were finalized outside the time frame due to the external availability of external there were three EPME recommendations implemented for frontline service delivery during the financial year who saw the realization of this target. The percentage of learners declared competent upon completion of their training in terms of the training provisioning plan was achieved. Honorable chairperson and honorable members, the interactive approach between learners and training officials ensured that all targets for subcategories of training, being that of crime prevention, crimes against women and children, crime investigations, as well as seats for public order policing, and members declared competent for legal principles were all achieved. The percentage of operational members competent in terms of mentally shooting was a challenge for the province for the financial year. The target was to increase to 80% with an actual achievement of 61% and a deviation of minus 19%. This was, the reason cited was due to the unreliable and interrupted ammunition supply, which prohibited shooting exercises prior an assessment. The, in, the, the target for the percentage reduction in the number of collisions involving police vehicles was well exceeded, with a minus 38.16% reduction aligned to a 5% target. This was achieved, managed, with the effective implementation of this vehicle risk measure. The percentage of total vehicle fleet available for policing had a target of 85%. However, this was not achieved with a result of 78.69% and a deviation of minus 5.31%. Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, this was due to the lapse of parts and accessories contract at the end of the second quarter would prohibit the attainment of this target. This led to the province reverting to the normal supply chain procurement process of obtaining local supplies via our database. All 679 bullet resistance vests that we received, we distribute, distributed leading to 100%. The number of steps on firearms reported as stolen and lost, the province did well in reducing this indicator, as there was a, there was a reduction of 28.03% against a 5% target. This was made possible by means of pin dot marking of firearms, which allowed for easy identification and recovery. Also, enhanced Okai Malau operations recovered, attributed to the successful recovery of these firearms. The province did not achieve its target for the percentage reduction in the number of official quarters occupied without approval. 
they had a target reduction of 50% to 29. However, during the period under review, we reduced by 6 to 52 at 10.34%, with a deviation of minus 39.66%. This was attributed to the lengthy legal process to evict illegal operators. Percentage of budget versus allocation, honorable chair and honorable members, this was analyzed at the beginning of the presentation. During the financial year, there were 13 feasibility studies conducted against 13 requests received as a, our target was met at 100%. Maintenance of vehicle conferencing systems were met at 43 by service during the year. Insulation of the personal identification video analysis system was exceeded. The province exceeded its target of 80 fever insulation system insulations by 242. The percentage utilization of the national photo image system, the target was exceeded at 95.82 against the target of 90%. The percentage utilization of the integrated case docket management system was not met. It was against the actual performance of 91.48% against a planned target of 97.68% with a deviation of minus 6.2%. The ICDMS system is still under development. It's still a new system with new functionalities being introduced from time to time, which resulted in frequent system downtime. However, this did not compromise our business in registering cases as the stations were able to register cases on the care system. Percentage of planned assurance engagements completed against the compliant assurance plans, SMS visits. This target was ex exceeded with a result of 89% against the target of 82.39%. The number of stepwise interventions in execution was, in, was maintained and achieved at 30. Percentage of intervention executions executed were at 100% and the same for evaluation interventions conducted. This was made possible by the strict adherence to the inspection plan. The finalization rate of complaints against the service in terms of approved standards, the category of 30 days per complaints, remained a challenge for the, for the province honorable chairperson and honorable members. The province had a target of 82% with an actual achievement of 73% and a deviation of minus 9%. The following factors resulted in the non-achievement of this target. Increased awareness campaigns led to the greater lodging of complaints. Complainants are always not stringent in honoring appointments within the time frame of 30 days. Percentage of audits completed in terms of the, in the internal plan with 11 audits being conducted for the reporting period. AG audits reports analyzed, they were two for the financial year at 100%. Internal audit reports analyzed, they were seven for the financial year at 100%. Number of material findings by the Auditor General of South Africa had a target to reduce to six. And for the year under review, the province had two. This was attributed to the fact that the province was proactive in assigning a task team. The number and percentage of civil claims against the SEFT in all financial programs. Honorable, it was a, this target was not achieved for the financial year. The target of 4,328 showed an increase of 0.42% with a total of 4,489 claims being registered. Just due to the fact that the complainants view civil claims as a lucrative opportunity to obtain compensation. Whilst there has been an increase in the number of civil claims for the reporting period, not all claims were honored. Number of awareness campaigns to promote the image of the sex, as well as number of communication surveys, were well exceeded by the province. For the target of 17 of awareness campaigns, the province executed 60. Communication service against the target of four 
the province of 17. This was prompted by the number of complaints against the steps where the, the, the province found it proven, proven to conduct additional surveys. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, there were 19,945 members who attended entry level training for operational training, support training, reservist training, and or management and leadership training interventions. Of these, 19,914 were declared competent with a competency rate of 99.84%. 17 in interns placed in the province for the financial year. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, there were 872 vehicles ordered and delivered for the financial year. We now move over to Program 2, Policing. Objective to discourage all crimes by providing a proactive and responsive policing service that will reduce the levels of priority crimes. Policing comprises of the following three sub-programs, crime prevention, border security, and specialized interventions. 35 performance indicators contained in policing, 26 targets were achieved, achieved and nine were not attained. 74 of our targets 74% of our targets being achieved and 26% policing and violence. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, serious crimes comprise of all categories of crimes, including crimes dependent on police action. Although the target of 3.3.74% was not achieved in the, during the province, the province reflected a decrease of minus 2.68%. The reasons cited for non-achievement were the increased target, targeted awareness campaigns and other interventions, which resulted in the increase in the reported crimes. And honorable chairperson and honorable members, despite the fact that the target was not achieved, there was an 11,086 decrease in this crime category in comparison to the 2018-2019 crime rate. The poor environmental design continued instability in the taxi industry, increasing illicit mining, increasing public protest, vigilantism, not justice, abuse of alcohol and drugs had an impact on the achievement of the number of reported crimes, as well as the increased levels of unemployment and an influx of undocumented foreign nationals, led to the planned target of minus 6.7% not being achieved against a 1.37% increase in a deviation of 8.07%. The number of property related, reported property related crimes was to reduce by minus 2%. This target was well ex ex exceeded with a reduction of minus 5.8%. This was achieved by the continuation of operations in Klein Malau and the deployment of rapid response vehicles on highways to identify to offer immediate response to serious activity. The number of reported contact related crimes was also well achieved. Again, with, a, with an actual achievement of a reduction of 6.80% against a target of minus 2%. This too was attributed to Okai Malau operations and the redeployment of response vehicles. The number of reported other serious crimes had a target of minus 2% and was exceeded with a reduction of minus 4.61%. This too attributed to Operation of Crime Allow and the redeployment of rapid response vehicles for highways. The number of serious crimes at the 12 high crime burn stations had a target of reduction of 3.74%. The province achieved a reduction of minus of, of 1.57% with a deviation of 2.17%. Of the 12 stations, increases in this crime category was noted at Sashangube, Tembisa, and Mamalevi East, which hampered the realization of this target. The number of reported contact crimes at the high crime rate stations was also not achieved, with a target of, of minus 6.7%, with an actual achievement of an increase in 1.57% with a deviation of 8.27%.
out of the 12 high crime rate stations, increases in this crime category at Sotom Rube, Kenvisa, and Mamalevi East prohibited the realization of this target. The reported number of trio crimes was also not achieved for the period under review, honorable chairperson, honorable members. We had a target, the province had a target of a reduction of minus reduction of 6.7%, and we had a reduction of 2.79%. The non-achievement of this target was contributed to the increase in the number of reported carjackings and business robberies, as well as businesses owned by foreign nationals who are targeted by criminals, as they are perceived as PC targets as they keep cash on hand. The number of stolen, lost, and illegal firearms had a planned target of 1,070. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, this target was not achieved for the year under review, with an actual achievement of 536. This was led to the intensified operations, as well as the good communication network that coexists amongst criminals, that led to them being reluctant with them commuting with their firearms. Not all firearms recovered have zero numbers, thereby compromising the circulation and identification thereof. The number of identif identifiable stolen and lost such firearms recovered had a target to increase with 10% to 53. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, this target was well exceeded with a recovery of 145. And this was made possible by data pur purification system that was undertaken by Flash and Central Firearm System to identify all firearms confiscated and booked in the exhibit registers and the enhanced firearm registration system. The number of stolen and robbed vehicles recovered at a target of 10,396. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, against an actual achievement of 15,868. This was made possible attributed to the high increased police visibility at hotspot areas and by means of deployment of the rapid response as well as the provincial instruction regarding the visit, visible vehicles have their blue lights on at all times. The targets for the strengthening and community-centered approach for policing were met with the percent with all 142 police stations have that had operational CPFs according to set guidelines, and 32 rural urban mixed police stations implementing the set criteria for the four police four pillars of the rural safety strategy. The target for the number of community outreach campaigns was well exceeded. The target was at five, with 56 being conducted for the year under review. This was attributed to the province. The province has a firm commitment in the fight against gender-based violence and femicide, which prompted the number of awareness campaigns. There were 115 schools identified to implement the school safety program. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, the target for the number of escapees from custody was to reduce from 2% to 93. However, this target was not achieved for the financial year, with there being 182 escapees. This was attributed, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, to two isolated incidents, which contributed to 50% of the annual number of escapees. These were at Kruger's Door, where they were 37, and Weather Brook, SAKs, that were 36, 39, with a combined number of 36 detainees. These isolated incidents had an impact on the attainment of this, of this target. The number of incidents of escapees, the, the target was met with 67, as opposed to a target of 68. The percentage of escapees rearrested had a target to maintain at 36.86%. This target was not achieved. Of the 152 escapees, 59 were successfully rearrested. The province experiences challenges in rearresting the escapees who flee national borders. The number of steps compliant, 13 compliance audits conducted was to maintain at 88. The province remarkably exceeded its target for this indicator with a result of 118. The 
percentage of reductions of firearms kept in SAP's 13 stores at police station was to reduce this 5% to 31,940. This target was well, well achieved with a reduction of 6.86%, but there have been 31,313 of these firearms. These were made possible with the, with the two firearm destructions that was effected during the financial year. The indicator, the target for the percentage of applications for new firearm licenses finalized within 90 working days was not achieved. The target was at 86.64%, with an actual achievement of 65.82%, and a deviation of 20.64%. This was led to the increased volume of new firearm applications, coupled with main mainframe systems downtown. Targets for complaints in all three categories were achieved for the financial year. In all 142 police stations render a victim friendly service at 100%. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, the province managed to monitor and coordinate a total of 7,578 low and medium risk events for the financial year. They were 127 crime related deaths for persons and at 100 percent with this target being realized. Targets for effective border security measures were achieved. It was applicable to border post Lanseria and city beat drive on. Targets were attained with a total of 3,155 in respect of effective border security management. This was made possible for the continuation of operations with Daniel Percentage of peaceful crowd management policed. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, all one, this was achieved at 100%. There have been 2,164 executed during the period under review. And 1,758 unrest crowd management incidents stabilized. Complaints reaction time. The types of complaints the SAPs respond to include alpha complaints, which are crimes in progress, and all other serious crimes which require immediate attention. Rubber complaints, these are for crimes that have already taken place and are less serious in nature, with no immediate threat to the quarter or the complainant. And the crimes that have already occurred. Charlie complaints, crimes or offenses in progress. For example, drunkenness, loitering, and trespassing. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, in comparison to the previous reporting period, the province reduced its reaction time in all categories. Firearm licenses applications finalized. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, the SEPS is solely responsible for the issuing of competency certificates, individual and firearm license persons, firearm licenses, the renewal of existing firearm licenses, and authorizations in order to declare persons competent to possess and use firearms. For the period under review, there were 52,672 new applications received, of which 34,672 were, were processed within 90 days with a finalization rate of 65.82%. This was attributed to the high volumes of applications received and the, and the compromisation of the Firearms recovered in relation to the number of firearms robbed. During the period under review, a total number of 3,028 firearms were circulated as stolen or lost. 536 firearms were recovered. Firearms recovered also include firearms stolen or lost prior to the reporting period. However, firearms, were reco firearms recovered without serial numbers also hampered the circulation thereof. Period under review. Three of the two, 328 firearms stolen reported as stolen or lost, 536 were recovered. Four. Vehicles recovered in relation to the number of vehicles stolen or robbed. 
Of the total of 30,627, there was a recovery of 14,868 with a 51.82% recovery. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, this was an increase of 594 in comparison to the previous reporting period. Escapes from police custody during the reporting period, a total number of 600 escapes, 67 escapes were, report, were recorded, during which 152 detainees escaped from police custody. Although there were 67 escapees during the financial year, this was a reduction of, to the 72 in the previous reporting period. Over to crime detection. The detective service program comprises of the four sub-crime pro programs, crime investigations, specialized investigations, criminal records and crime scene management, family violence, child protection, and sexual offenses. Of the 36 indicators, six targets were achieved and 20 were not achieved. This translated to 44% of targets achieved and 56 not achieved. Targets for the detection rate for serious crimes and contact crimes at the high crime rate stations was not achieved, with a deviation of minus 3.34% and minus 15.44% respectively. This was attributed to the suspects not being able to identify suspects to the to, to victims not being able to identify suspects to compare uh, ID kits. Fingerprints are accepted from the crime scenes were not linked to the various systems. The child rate rate at the 12 high crime rate stations was achieved 99%. 0.15% against a target of 98.52%. Trial ready rate at contact crimes at the high track 12 crime rate stations with a 99% accuracy against a target of 98.46%. Detection rate for serious crimes had a planned target to increase to 34%. However, this target was not achieved with an actual achievement of 28.65% of minus 5.35%. This was attributed to the fact that victims were incapable of identifying suspects or compiling identificates. The tracing of suspects is indeed a challenge. The non-availability of eyewitnesses and clues placed a greater strain on the detection of these cases. Fingerprints and DNAs uplifted from crime scenes are not linked to the applicable systems. The detection rate for contact crimes and property-related crimes was not achieved. For detection rate contact crimes, there was a target to increase to 52%, with an actual achievement of 36.75% and a deviation of minus 15.25%. This was led to the fact that in some instances, suspects and complainants reached an informal agreement, leading to the withdrawal of the case. Detection rate property related crimes had a target to increase to 11.43% with an actual achievement of 9.44% and a deviation of minus 1.99%. The absence of identifiable fingerprints and DNA evidence of the crime scene can this category. Detection rate contact related crime had a planned target to increase to 44.5% with an actual achievement of 46%. And this was made possible, but the withdrawal of the classification is not supported by the complainant and ordered by the court. Detection rate of serious crimes had a planned target of 33.95%. Target was not achieved with an actual achievement of 32.65% and a deviation of minus 1.3%. This was attributed to the fact that the finalization of fraud cases is a protracted process, as well as the fact that investigation, investigators need additional training in order to equip them to investigate fraud cases. Crimes dependent on police action had a target of 99.81%. This was targeted 
with the result of 99.82%. Protection rate trio crimes had a planned target to increase to 15.85%. This target was not achieved, with an actual achievement of 8.20% and a deviation of minus 7.65%. This was the reason for the deviation was the delay in obtaining of forensic leads due to the to the shortage of FSL and its analysts resulting in a backlog. Detection rate of criminal and violent conducts during public protests had an increase, a target to increase to 41.65%. This target was not achieved with a result of 41.05%. This target was not achieved with a 0.06%, and this was as a result as witnesses are reluctant to give witness statements to testify against the community for fear, due to fear of reprisal. Protection rate for crimes against women 18 years and above had a target to increase to 72%. This target was not achieved with an actual achievement at 65.15% and a deviation of 6.5%. The increase in the number of reported crimes, rapes, assault crimes, and assault in the age plays a significant role in the non-achievement of this target, as well as instances with date, in the of date rape where drugs were used and victims were not able to identify the perpetrators or compile identity kits. Injection rates crimes against children under 18 had a target of to increase to 67% with an actual achievement of 56.28%. This target was not achieved with a deviation of 5.72%. This was attributed to the fact that young victims cannot articulate what happened to them during the commission of the crime, resulting in lengthy protracted investigations. Targets for child rates have been met for the categories as reflected. The trial, trial ready rate for trio crimes had a target of 87.02%. Honorable Jefferson did not met. The actual achievement of 86.19%. And this was led, brought about by the delay. In, it was due to the shortage of product yes. which led to the backlog. The ratio of registered informers versus detectives has had a, a target with an actual performance of 0.84 is to 1. Mm -hmm. Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, this is a challenge for the province in that most informers prefer to work as contacts and to be registered as, as formal, informers, yeah, formal informers, providing their details for the police due to lack of trust in the system as well as fear of retaliation by criminals. The percentage reduction on outstanding persons already circulated at the 12 high crime rate stations, the target was achieved by minus 14.1%. There was a total of 1,854 cell phones downloaded and analyzed for the period under review. The target for the image downloads was not achieved for the financial year of the chairperson. It was a target of this was a target of 691 with an actual achievement of 441. This was due to the insufficient number of analysts to meet the provincial demand. The percentage of forensic exhibits submitted to forensic services was achieved, a target of 85.36% was achieved against a result of 87.66%. Percentage of steps 76 was submitted within the prescribed time frame. This target was not achieved, the target of 53.85%, with a deviation of minus 3.25%. This was not achieved due to the fact that the prescribed time frame takes, takes into the account weekends and public holidays, which has a negative effect on the achievement of this target. The decrease, percentage decrease of fingerprints without the result of trial. Had a, a, a target of decrease with 8% to 7,322, with an actual achievement of minus 5.42%. There was a deviation of 5.8%. The 
This was attributed to the delay at Criminal Record Center due to the lack of capacity. The percentage of original previous conviction reports generated within 15 days had a target to increase to 98.17%. This had an actual achievement of 93.54% and a deviation of minus 4.63% which saw that this target not being realized. This was due to the delay in availability of reports due to the lack of capacity. The percentage of results updated in percent of guilty verdict and non guilty verdict and targets were also not met due to the aging ACA system hardware that had a negative impact on this um, indicator. However, the matter is currently receiving attention. Life sentences imposed, they were a total of 249 life sentences imposed for the year under review, honorable chairperson and honorable members. 98 were for murder, 147 for rape, 2 for house robbery, and 2 for armed robbery. The FCS system in Kauteng conducted 143 awareness complaints, 1,069 suspect racing operations. 4,729 arrests, 11 arrests, and 20 cancellations of arrested and one of circulated systems. Thank you, Captain, for the presentation. Then can we proceed to the second one, the third quarter crime statistics report? I'll request the office of the PC to do that or delegate. The person will be presenting it for us. Thanks, Captain. Thank you very much. Honorable Presentation. Chairman. Can you wait, PC? Uh, TJ Masilela. Please, while the presentation is on, can you mute your, your mic, please? Uh, over to you, PC. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members of the Committee. Uh, my team and I now present to you the Provincial Crime Statistics for quarter number three of the 2020-2021 financial year, which is October to December of last year. It is worth noting that this is the period during which our safer festive season operation kick off and ran through to end of January this year. This third quarter is also in reference to the time when the country was on alert level number one of the lockdown since the 21st September 2020, moving to the adjusted level uh, number three or on 15 December 2020 as the holiday season commenced. As per the norm, the basis for the comparative analysis of the crime picture is in fact the crime picture of the corresponding period in the previous financial year. Exactly two weeks ago, Police Minister General Peggy Kelly released the national crime statistics for the same period under review, and the minister painted a quite a green picture in relation to how some provinces had performed in general. Coming to the 17 community reported serious crimes, as per as the province of Kaute, we were able to reduce crime by 9.6%, significantly above the 7.5% target set for the 17 community reported serious crimes. This means that we were able to record a decrease of 11,791 cases lower than in the previous financial year. This reduction was evident in all five districts. This become noteworthy as we, alongside other law enforcement agencies and private sector partners, continue to work together closely in our effort to balance crime prevention and combating with the enforcement of the COVID-19 disaster management lockdown regulations. We have had this added responsibility since the First Nation nationwide lockdown in March 2020, of ensuring that we do not drop either one of the balls. Coming to the contact crimes, honorable members, we will observe when the statistics get presented by my team from the Office of the Crime Register 
that we were able to decrease the overall contract crime category by 2.7%, which translates to 1,339 cases lower than in the October to December 2019. Neither increased by 7.5% in comparison to the same period in the previous financial year. This means that 93 more people were killed in comparison to the same period in 2019. 24 of these murders were as a result of domestic violence. In our analysis of the murder cases, we found that the top contributing factors include arguments, robberies at the household, businesses and streets, mob justice incidents, taxi violence, and illicit mining. Furthermore, most victims were murdered in public places like on the streets, open fields, parking areas, and abandoned buildings. Some victims were killed at the home of the perpetrator. Liquor outlet also featured as the most likely place for people to be killed in Kabote. The province also saw an increase in attacks on farms and small holdings, including murder. During the period under review, three murders on farms and small holdings were reported. On additional crimes committed were nine house robberies and one business robbery. Attempted murder increased by 3.8% while assault shooting age increased by 4.4%. Coming to sexual offenses, we saw an increase by 6.0%, with 2,517 2, red cases translating to 4.6% increase. That further translates to 111 cases higher than during the corresponding period in the financial year 2019-2020. 527 of these incidents occurred at the home of either the victim of the perpetrator, while 178 occurred at the public place. 138 of these incidents were related to domestic violence. Ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, honorable members of the committee, the public outcry against the scourge of gender-based violence indeed reflects the challenge we face in the province where domestic violence has contributed a great deal to the crime picture of the province. In quarter number three, that is under review, we recorded 7,860 offenses that were related to domestic violence. The top five such offenses being common assault with 4,434 counts of domestic violence-related offenses. Assault GPH, 1,781 counts, malicious damage, to property, 1,126 counts. Rape with one with 138 counts, as previously mentioned, and murder with 24 counts. Domestic violence also contributed to other serious and violent crimes, uh, as in 161 sexual offenses, 26 attempted murders, 24 murders mentioned previously. Coming to contact-related crime, honorable chairperson and member, Contact-related crimes that consist of arson and malicious damage to property decreased by 0.9%, meaning a drop by 71 cases. This decrease was due to a reduction in the number of malicious injury to property cases registered. Property-related crimes uh, decreased by 22.0%. The biggest decrease were recorded on burglary at residential premises and theft of vehicles and motorcycles. Stop theft was the only crime in counting that indicated an increase in this category, where six cases more were registered, translating to 1.9% increase. Coming to robbery aggravating, with regard to this subcategory, we recorded an overall decrease of 5.1% in trio crimes, the biggest reduction by 324 cases lower than in 2019, albeit that we experienced a challenge in relation to crimes such as car and truck hijackings, which increased by 5.9% and 31.8% uh, respectively. Our analysis revealed that most of the car jackings occurred during the night, including the so-called blue light hijackings, where robbers are said to be impersonate law enforcement officers. In relation to robberies at residential places and, and at businesses, 
our performance improved as we recorded 195 less residential robberies and 260 less business robberies during October to December 2020. Coming to cash in transit robberies, a total of 31 cases were registered in the province, translating to 106.7%. This means that we experienced 16 more attacks on cash banks in the third quarter of the 2021 uh, financial year. In 13 of these incidents, suspects used explosives from the vehicles to access the money. On the other hand, we continue to sustain in partnership with the banking industry um, zero incidents. We also had a zero incident of the bank robberies. Crime as a result of police action. On crime as a result of police action, the ideal is for all crimes to show an increase as a result of the proactive policing. This means that our crimes are being detected and suspects arrested. So in this category, the only crime that indicated such an increase was sexual offenses detected as a result of police action. Our response and approach to crime, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members, we as the province, we have adopted the five-year GGT program of action where all law enforcement agencies in the province committed themselves towards the achievement of the identified focus areas. Operation Okai Malau is our implementation vehicle as we continue to uphold our integrated approach towards dealing decisively with problematic crimes in county. Operation Okai Malau that is conducted via a police operation across all the five districts every Thursday and weekend has inspired public confidence in our strive to assure the residents of Tauten that we can and will keep them and their property safe and secure. This happened over and above normal crime prevention and combating at station level. The successes gained during this operation in terms of tracing of wanted suspects, recovery of drugs, illegal firearms, stolen vehicles, disrupting the market for counterfeit and illicit goods, serve as a motivation to us that we are on the right track and hence our unfaltering energy week in and week out. We have and continue to strengthen the private sector through business against crime, SA, and our communities. Hence successes like many vehicles, shop shops, we have busted in the, in the period under review. Let me take this opportunity Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members to express our gratitude as the SAPF for the fulfillment of the commitment by County and Provincial Government that recently saw our relaunch highway patrol unit get a boost with the high performance vehicles we received last weekend. This will take us a long way in our strides towards fighting trio crimes such as hijackings that went up the past quarter career van robberies and other problematic killer crimes. The impact of the COVID-19, before I give over to the Office of the Provincial Crime Register to elaborate further on the synopsis I just presented, I think it is important that I present a very brief overview of the impact the COVID-19 has had on the SAPS in the period under review. With members of all law enforcement agencies, including the South African National Defense Force, providing an essential service as frontline workers during the pandemic, the SAPS in counting has not been spared. In October, 20 of our police stations and buildings had to be temporarily closed for decontamination. In November, the number increased to 21. Then December, of the 143 stations in the province, 134 temporarily closed down for decontamination. Some stations as many as four times in one month. It therefore comes as no surprise that today, counting has since March 2020 lost 82 members to the pandemic, made their souls rest in peace. 72 of these being SAPS Act members, 4,478 members tested positive and six of these are currently in hospital. During the period under review, 335 members tested positive, four members passed away, 324 recovered, and 13 were hospitalized. As, pain, as painful as it has been to attach cases to these numbers, 
and those dedicated members of the FAPF. We are soldiers all, encountered, encouraged by those 4,333 who have recovered and returned to work. In the best interest of the committees, we said. As a way forward, we are appealing for even tighter collaboration with different stakeholders where we find that some crime is really beyond the control of the SAPS. Issues such as environmental design in relation to population explosion in counting due to obvious reasons require the involvement of key government departments at all spheres. In instances where some crimes happen behind closed doors in private spaces of victims and perpetrators, police seek to tighten relations with communities so that we together build a citizenry that is alert, responsive with enough confidence and trust in police to report. In conclusion, uh, Honorable Chairperson and ladies and gentlemen, very soon we will be back here again for the purpose of presenting this last quarter crime picture, which is January to March this year. This will accordingly be measured against the same quarter of 2019-2020 financial year. We therefore anticipate an uphill battle in terms of the crime picture of the coming quarters due to the impact of the risk-adjusted strategy and subsequent restrictions per lockdown level. This, honorable members, is as a result of our own comparative analytical tool where we compare the current period against the corresponding period of the previous financial year. The interpretation of the current picture uh, of future uh, quarters will need to be con contextualized so that the statistics are not misconstrued as the worst performing ever by the SAPF. It will be important to take into consideration the outbreak of the global COVID-19 pandemic, the subsequent declaration of the state of disaster by the president in March 2020, the rollout of the risk-adjusted strategy that ushered in a nationwide hard lockdown level five, crime went down to unprecedented low of minus 7% to 70, minus 78%. That in reality could paint a distorted picture that crime in this current last quarter of 2020-2021 is out of control. The unprecedented decrease will have an effect on future crime comparison reports that must be interpreted in line with the effect of COVID-19 lockdown period. But honorable members, ladies and gentlemen, let us cross that bridge when we get there. Honorable members of the portfolio committee, I now present to you uh, Captain Nico, our, our analyst to present the current statistics. Nico, over to you. Thank you, General. Good day, Honorable, Honorable Chair, Honorable Members of the Committee, uh, MEC, as well as the media and the provincial management of the South African Police Services. As the General mentioned, uh, we are, I'm presenting the crime statistics for the last quarter of the 2021 um, financial year, the third quarter, that is from October to December. The purpose of the, or the content, we'll go through, through the purpose, the third quarter crime statistics, intervention programs, successes, status of, of uh, violence in schools, and then we'll get to the conclusion. As I mentioned, the purpose is uh, to present. To, uh, the purpose of the presentation is to, to brief the committee within the Gauteng Legislature on the following matters: crime situation with specifics, reference to the third quarter of crime statistics, intervention, and intervention programs, status of uh, violence in schools, and related intervention programs. Looking at the third quarter crime statistics itself. We're going to look into the 17 community reported crimes. The 17 community reported crimes is broken down into four broad categories. The first category on the left hand side is contact crimes. That consists of murder, attempted murder, assault GBH, common assault, robbery aggravating, common robbery, and sexual offenses. The second category is contact related crimes. That consists of arson and malicious damage to property. Property related crimes are third category that is broken down to burglary residential premises, burglary business premises, theft of motor vehicle, theft out of motor vehicle, and stock theft. A 
And then our last broad category for the 70 community report of crimes will be other, other serious crimes, that is theft other, uh, commercial crime and shoplifting. Then we'll also look at the crimes depending on the police action. That's what the CDPA stands for. In that crimes, we're looking into illegal possession of firearms and ammunition, drug-related crimes, driving under the influence of alcohol and drugs, and then also sexual offenses detected as a result of police action. The housing picture itself, I will concentrate on the last four blocks or the last four columns on the presentation itself. The first block is the contact crimes, and there we can see that murder increased from 1,234 cases up to 1,327 cases. That's 93 cases higher than the previous year. And that's an increase of 7.5%. Attempted murder also increased with 49, uh, 49 counts. That is 1,274 cases, and it went up to 1,323 cases. That's a 3.8% in, uh, increase. Assault GBH increased by 4.4%. That's an increase of 400. And 92 cases. Then the last offence within the uh, contact crimes that increased, we're looking at total sexual offences that went from 3,091 cases, it went up to 3,276 cases. That's an increase of 185 cases, and that consists of a 6% increase itself. Looking at the breakdown of our robbery aggravating, just to mention our robbery aggravating decreased by 1,486 cases, that's a 10.5% reduction. And within that offence, we can break it down into the following six offences itself. Uh, carjacking increased by 131 cases, that's a 5.9% increase. Truck hijacking increased from 173 cases to 228 cases, that's a 55 cases increase, that's a 31% increase. Robbery of cash and transits, increased from 15 cases up to 31. That's a 16 cases increase in comparison with the previous year. So 106.7% in percentage itself. Looking at the total trio crimes, at the bottom of the page, we have our trio crimes for the previous year was 6,297, and that's a reduction from 324 cases, and it went to our current quarter, 5,973 cases. That's a 5.1% reduction. As mentioned on the top, we have our sexual offenses that increased. Just to break down our sexual offenses, we have rape that increased by 111 cases. That's a 4.6% increase. Attempted rape increased by 7.2%, five cases higher. Sexual assault increased by 9.6%. That's 52 cases higher than the previous year. And then the last one, contact sexual offences, 17 cases higher than the previous year. It's a 23.3% increase. Then uh, looking at the 70 community report of crimes, the totals, comparison with the, previous, with the, the other provinces, uh, you'll see that Gauteng is the highest with a bar chart on the the third bars, third pair, pair of bars, Gauteng contributed to 27.8% to the national figure. And as the PC already mentioned, we had a reduction of 11,791 cases. That's a 9.6% reduction itself. Looking at our trends for the quarter itself, uh, October, we had a reduction of 4,727 cases. November reduction of 4,395, uh, 4, and then in December a reduction of 2,669 cases. Just to mention that again, level one of the COVID restrictions were counted for from the 21st of September up until till the 14th of December, and then we had that um, adjusted level three as from the 15th of December. Looking at the contribution per, per district, uh, Ikureni district contributed to 27,689 cases, and that compared with the previous year of 29,944 cases, 
it will consist of a reduction of 7.5 percent and that's 200 2,255 cases lower than the previous year. Johannesburg district itself also had a reduction of 5,777 cases. It's a 12.6% reduction. City Bing also a reduction, 6.1%. It's 439 cases lower than the previous year. Twani district, a reduction of 2,354 cases. Please move the slides. Please move the slides. I'm still on that slide. Thanks, Honorable Sizagel. Okay. Looking at the 70 community reported crimes, um, our first 11 stations were the highlighted in yellow, were the top, were in the national top 30 station lists. Uh, out of the 40 top Gauteng um, contributing stations, 24 recorded an inc a decrease, one recorded a stabilization, and then 15 an, an increase. The highest uh, decrease were at Johannesburg Central, and then the highest increase at Cineville. Then the, that's the second page of the top 40. Another three of them that in, uh, indicated an increase. Then looking at the crime trends for contact crimes, you'll see that for December, we had an increase of 90 cases compared with the same month last year. And then City Bing was the only district with an increase of 25 cases in, compared, in comparison with the previous year for the quarter itself. Gauteng had a, de a decrease of 2.7%. Contact crimes, the top 17 of these stations were in the national top 30 list. And out of the 40 top, top 40 stations in Gauteng, 21 stations recorded a decrease and 19 indicated an increase. The highest decrease at Dobsonville were 390 cases compared with the previous year, lower, and then the highest increase at Ivory Park, 195 cases compared with the previous year. That's just page two of the contact crimes, top 40 stations in Gauteng. Then looking at domestic violence, Johannesburg District at the highest contribu um, contribution to, to the Gauteng picture. And you'll see that in, in October, there were 3,696 case, uh, 69 cases reported for domestic violence in Gauteng. Again, looking at domestic violence, just the breakdown itself, the offenses that, that were targeted, looking at murder, we had 40, 24 cases. 10 of those were female and 14 were male, so it were targeted. Rapes, we had 138 cases and 136 of those were female. Sexual offences, 21 females, 2 males, total of 23 cases. Just to mention the highest one there, were con um, common assault with 4,424 cases of domestic violence assaults. Then moving over to the trend for the murders, all four, our, all three our months for this October, for October to December indicated an increase. October, October increasing with 40 cases, November nine cases, and December 44 cases. Only city being indicated a decrease of 8.7 percent. Gauteng itself an increase of 7.5. Looking at the top causative factors for murder. Well, I asked, I asked cause the factors as arguments, uh, misunderstandings that related to our murders, and then also uh, robbery, especially house robberies, business robberies, and street robberies that, that transferred into a murder itself. Two of the murders that were reported were police members, and then three of these murders were also farm attacks. Looking at the top 40 stations for murder, the top six of them were, the highest, were also in the national top 30 list. 13 of the top 40 stations in Gauteng indicated a decrease, two indicated a stabilization, and 25 indicated an increase. The highest decrease were at Morocco with 13 cases, and then the highest increase were at Lenasha with 20 cases higher than the previous year. Just the remaining stations of the top 40. 
then attempted murder itself with the, um, the trends for the past quarter. We have in October, we had 14 cases lower than the previous year, November, 12 cases higher, and in December, a 27, uh, 75 cases higher than the previous year. Three of our districts indicated a decrease, and Ikrulian in Seri Beng indicated that increase Gauteng itself, an increase of 3.8% for attempted murders itself. Assault GBH, all our districts indicated an increase. Gauteng increased with 4.4%. Mur uh, murder increased in October with 136 cases, November 108 cases, and December 248 cases. Robbery aggravating. For all our districts, we indicated a decrease with the highest decrease at Johannesburg Central, 1,160 cases lower than the previous year. And all three months also indicated a decrease. Uh, November with the highest of 577 cases lower than the previous year. Looking at our top 40 stations for robbery aggravating in Gauteng, the first 15 also indicated uh, were also featured in the national top 30 um, stations. In our top 40 for Gauteng, 26 of these stations indicated a decrease and 14 indicated an uh, increase. The highest decrease, Johannesburg Central, with 138 cases, and the highest increase were at Ivory Park, with 69 cases higher than the previous year. That's just the, the second part of our robbery aggravating is the top 40. In a breakdown of a robbery aggravating, as previously mentioned, robbery aggravating breakdown, we've got carjacking, that in um, carjacking, robbery residential premises, robbery non-residential premises, those three uh, consist of our trio crimes. Then we also have robbery of cash and transit, bank robberies, and truck hijackings. In total, the trio crimes decreased by 5.1% for Gauteng, and all districts indicated a decrease as well. The highest decrease per month was in October, with the 152 cases lower than the previous year. Just the same picture as um, the Gauteng picture itself. Carjackings increased by 5.9%. Truck hijackings increased by 31.8%. Cash and transit increased by 106.7%. One, and then we have a reduction in house robberies and business robberies and there were no bank robberies registered for both years. Our top 40 stations for trio crimes, the first 15 were also the features in the national top 30 stations. 20 of these stations for, for Gauteng indicated a decrease, and then 20 also in, indicated an uh, increase. The highest decrease were at Hannity with 50, 50 cases lower than the previous year, and then the highest increase at Ivory Park with 52 cases higher than the previous year. This is the second part of our trio crimes. Carjacking, looking at carjacking itself, we had an increase in November of 72 cases, October 48 cases, and then in December 11 cases higher than the previous year. West Rand District was the only one that indicated a decrease of 9.9%, and the highest increase were at um, City Bing with 29.0%, it's a 40, 45 cases higher than the previous year. Robbery residential premises, two of our districts indicated an increase at City Bing and West Rand, and then the, the other three indicated a decrease. The biggest decrease was in October with 80 cases lower, November 72 cases lower than the previous year. Robbery at non-residential premises or business robberies, uh, all our districts indicated a decrease. Gauteng itself a reduction of 13.4%, and the highest um, reduction was in October, with 100, 120 cases lower than the previous year. Looking at our CO, uh, robbery of cash and transits, uh, we had 31 cases reported in Gauteng. As previously mentioned, there were uh, 16 cases higher than the previous year. 17 of these 31 were cross pavement robberies, and then 14 of them, vehicles were, were targeted. And out of that 14 vehicles that were targeted, the suspects used um, explosives to gain access to the money within the vehicle itself. 
truck hijackings in all three months for October, November, and December, we had an increase. October, the highest, highest increase with 30 cases. November 12th and December 13. Only Johannesburg Central, uh, Johannesburg District indicated a decrease of 37.3%. That's a reduction of 19 cases. And then the highest increase at Ikuruleni was 76.5% in comparison with the previous year. Sexual offences. Sexual offences are broke down on, uh, broken down is we have rape, sexual assault, attempted sexual assault, or sexual offences, and then contact sexual offences. Sexual offences in total itself, in October we had a deduction of 24 cases, November increase of 21, December 20, 128 cases higher than the previous year. All our districts indicated an increase in Gauteng, an increase of 6.0% in comparison with the previous year. Sexual offences is just a breakdown, as with the previous page as well. Rape increased by 4.6. Uh, attempted sexual offences increased by 7.2. Sexual assault an increase of 9.6. And then contact sexual offences, 23.3% increase. The highest contributing was rape, was 77%, uh, followed by sexual offences con consisting of 18% of the total sexual offences itself. Sexual offences were the place of occurrence in Gauteng. The pie chart on the left is the highest contributors with the residential, prem residential premises of the perpetrator or the victim were the highest with 527 uh, incidents. And then public places, the streets, open fields, the second highest with 178 cases registered. Then on the pile on the right hand side is the lower contributing places with ed educational institutions also consisting the on the, on the orange. Rivers and dams were 13. Contact related crimes consist of arson and malicious damage to property. And for con total contact crimes with this quarter, we had an increase in October of 81 cases, November a reduction of 20, 78 cases, and December a reduction of 74 cases. Three of our districts indicated an increase, and Ecorolini and Johannesburg districts both indicated a decrease. Property-related crimes itself, broken down to burglary residential premises, burglary non-residential premises, theft of motor vehicle, theft out of motor vehicle, and stock theft. The total property-related crimes, we had a reduction all three months with the highest reduction in November, with 2,656 cases lower than the previous year. And all five of our districts indicated a reduction, Gauteng a reduction of 22.0%. Just again, the overview of property-related crimes itself. The only property-related property crime that indicated an increase was stock theft, and that increased by 1.9%. It's six cases higher than the previous year. Other serious crimes, which consist of theft uh, not mentioned elsewhere and other thefts, commercial crime and shoplifting. The total other serious crimes, uh, we had a reduction all three months, October reduction of 1,000, 566 November 1,084 cases lower than the previous year. Gauteng itself is a reduction of 9.9%, and five, all five of our districts indicated the reduction. Just an overview of the other serious crimes. There's only one of things that in, indicated an increase, commercial crime, that increased by 7.9%. It's 598 cases higher than the previous year. Uh, other thefts, a reduction of 15.7%, and shoplifting reduction of 12.4%. Now looking at the crimes dependent on police action, uh, crimes dependent on police action, as previously mentioned, it consists of illegal possession of firearms, drug-related crimes, driving under influence, and sexual offenses as a result of police action. This category, we had a reduction in all four, all three of the months of uh, October to December. Just want to mention here that you'll see that there's a reduction, but the, the um, Color coding is red. Um, it's it's a negative impact, so that's why it's a re, uh, it's red. As soon as there's a made a rest mate, um, it will turn green, and then it it should be indicating it as an increase. The only uh, only district that indicated an increase was City Bing District that increased by 12.7%, and that's the reason for its green 
color coding at the bottom as well. Coating itself, reduction of 28.7%. Just the breakdown of the four crimes of um, crimes dependent on police action. The only one that increased was sexual offenses as a result of police action that increased by 40.5%. That's 89 cases higher than the previous year. The biggest reduction was driving under influence, and that's a reduction of 28.7%. And then, Chair, with your permission, I would like to hand over. Kenel Habib will deal with the last part of our presentation as to what is that which you are going to do moving forward. Kenel Habib. The Honourable Chairperson, Honourable Committee Members, MEC for Community Safety, our Provincial Commissioner, media that is present, senior officers, good afternoon, and all protocol observed. In terms of our intervention programs, uh, you will see that our intervention, intervention programs are focused at addressing the following crimes which have shown uh, an increasing trend during the reporting period. Those crimes, more specifically in terms of contact crimes, will be murder, attempted murder, assault, GBH, and sexual offenses. In terms of robbery aggravating, it will be carjacking, truck hijacking, robbery of cash in transit, and in terms of contact-related crimes, arson more specifically, and in terms of property-related crimes, it will be stock theft. In terms of moving forward and addressing these trends, counting steps in conjunction with the Metro Police Departments, as well as the Department of Community Safety, developed the growing, to, uh, growing how tank together, the GGT five-year policing plan. This is an integrated plan, which was approved by the Provincial Executive Council, which is driven and o operationalized through the operation of Kai Malau and has the following objectives that is addressed through the plan. If we look at the objectives, it is improving the quality of services, uh, drawing up of station-specific plans, improved police vis visibility, improved partnership policing, proliferation of firearms, reducing crime priorities, priority crime, sorry, improved crime detection, corruption, e-policing, and improved service delivery. Looking at the driving force behind this five-year GGT plan is the driving force of Okai Malau successes, and the following may you please go back to the last slide please please yeah uh, thank you Looking at the implementation of Okai Malau operations, the following successes were achieved during the period of September 2020 to December 2020. The following offenses in terms of murder, a total of 165 arrests were made. In terms of attempted murder, a total of 108 arrests were made. In terms of rape, a total of 435 arrests were made. In terms of sexual assault, a total of 80 arrests were made. In terms of house, break, uh, house robberies, a total of 78 arrests were made. Business robberies, 72 arrests. Hijacking, 40 arrests. Assault GBH, 2,842 arrests. Assault common, domestic violence, 636 arrests. Assault common, 861 arrests. Armed robberies, 122 arrests. Common robberies, 392 arrests. Total for the contact crime arrests due to Operation of Kaimolau, 5,831. In terms of crimes against women and children for the same reporting period, the offences addressed, common assault, total address were 249, crimes against women was 243, and crimes against children was a number of six. In terms of domestic violence, total arrests made was 696, crimes against women, 667 and crimes against children 29 for assault gbh a total of 407 arrests were made crimes against women 402 and crimes against children was five 
In terms of attempted murder, a total arrest of two was made. Two was against crimes against women. In terms of murder itself, total arrest made was 16. 12 were for crimes against women and four for crimes against children. In terms of rape, a total of 133 arrests were made. 101 was for crimes against women and 32 was crimes against children. In terms of sexual assault, a total of 75 total arrests were made. 67 was for crimes against women and eight was crimes against children. This gives us a total for crimes against women and children for the reporting period for Gauteng was 1,578 arrests, of which 1,494 was crimes against women and 84 more specifically against children. If we move on to the continuation of Okaimulao's successes in terms of warrant of arrest that is before circulation, possession of firearm, a total of 65, possession of drugs, 257, possession of motor vehicles, 67, and possession of stolen property, 120, which gives us a total of 509. In terms of counter goods, the counterfeit goods operation successes, through planned integration operations, the number of counterfeit goods, I, in terms of mag wheels, clothing, shoes, cigarettes, perfume, cell phones, accessories, washing powder, etc., to the value of 27,486,500 rands was confiscated throughout Gauteng during the third quarter, 2020-2021. In addressing violence against schools, the following interventions were implemented. The following challenges are currently being addressed through the following interventions. Affecting learners, the challenges are bullying and intimidation, substance and drug abuse, gang activities, possession of dangerous weapons, assaults, theft, gender violence. In terms of the criminal actions, it's vandalism and attack outside school premises. The following interventions were implemented uh, to address the violence in schools. Due to COVID-19 lockdown regulations, schools were closed for a significant period of time for the 2020 school year, where no incidents of violence in schools were reported. The following programs, however, are still being implemented. The linking of schools, where all schools in Gauteng are linked to their local police stations. The linking process involves identification, consultation, and approvals. The role players include station commanders, school principals, the management, and Gauteng education coordinators. We also implementing, implemented the Adopt a Cop program, which is a national phenomenon. All schools are adopted by police officials, crash to primary schools adopted by non-commissioned officers, and high and secondary schools are adopted by commissioned officers. The school safety committees was also implemented. We actively participate in school safety committees to promote safety at school. The intervention is a multidisciplinary approach that, is, that includes the school governing body, school management, SEPs, and other role players. Prioritization of schools. Schools that experience constant challenges are identified and prioritized for intervention. The sa same process of school linking is followed when identifying schools as priorities. Deployment of patrollers. The deployment of patrollers to school to improve safety and security. The program is mainly driven by the Gauteng Provincial Community Policing Board, which is supported greatly by the Department of Education and the Department of Community Safety. 477 schools were prioritized by the Education Department for deployment of patrollers and, and to enhance safety and security at schools. Social crime prevention school talks. Social crime prevention coordinators and sector managers conduct school talks to discourage criminality and promote patriotism. Through the sa school safety committees, such interventions are conducted to address specific challenges. In terms of awareness campaigns, campaigns are conducted regularly to create awareness on identified challenges and to promote information sharing with learners and educators. The GBVF awareness campaigns have been prioritized at the schools. In terms To conclude, although through dedication, commitment, and hard work of all concerned, Gauteng managed to reduce the 2017 community reported crimes with 9.6% 9 
during the third quarter of 2020-2021. It is important to keep in mind that COVID-19 lockdown regulations also had an impact on crime. Going forward and in a situation and climate where society may return to a certain level of normality, it will be daunting to us to expect the same levels of crime reduction as was attained during the period under review. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. We submit. Thank, thank you, Provincial Commissioner and your team for the presentation of the two reports, the annual report of the 2019-2020 and the third quarter uh, crime statistics report. Uh, members of the committee, uh, before I open for questions, can I be allowed to acknowledge some of the stakeholders which we requested them that they should be part of, part of our meeting? MMC Butler from, from West Rand Municipality, uh, MMC Lohote Rand West, MMC Setsualo Moja Mohali City, Councillor Mufikwe uh, Salga, and uh, Mr. Masilela, the chairperson of the CPF provincial board. Yeah, uh, thanks uh, for the presentation on the issues which have been highlighted by the provincial commissioner and the team in terms of the targets achieved and not achieved with those command and also the stats in terms of, we are appreciating the decrease of the property crime, is, uh, especially the 22% is the high decrease. Uh, we are appreciating it and also the domestic violence, the number of the 7,860. And members of the committee, I will take hands I'm now opening for hands, for clarity, seeking questions, input, and comments. Then after the members have asked the questions, I'll take the set only on those stakeholders which you have mentioned. And uh, media and other stakeholders, we are requesting them to send the questions it's either to the office of the provincial commissioner or arrange for an interview in terms of the issues which want, what they wanted to, to raise, as this is a portfolio committee meeting. I'll take the hands. I see Honorable Cizagele. Then after Honorable Cizagele, I see Honorable Hoffman. Then I... I also see Honorable Kanyile in that order. I think I even saw Honorable Honorable Tizakele. No, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson. I won't focus a lot on the presentation on both of the uh, steps, but I will actually focus on the intervention intervention problem because that flows from the the steps that they presented to to us. Um, I see that now there's a new um, a, a strategy a strategic plan in order to reduce crime in in in, in Hawaii. But I'm not getting a sense that the previous uh, uh, strategy was actually assessed and also to check if it, it was effective or not effective. I and I also realize that there's quite a number of uh, areas that need to be to be addressed in this in, in, in the strategic plan. There's about, if I'm not mistaken, there's about ten uh, strategic areas that need to be need to be addressed in order for us to achieve a, 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 a low crime. In but having 10 strategic areas, uh, I know it's very difficult to meet. Your strategy is supposed to be uh, very short in order for you to be able to achieve what you intend to, to achieve. The thing is, the number of areas, I'm telling you, you will never be able to climb uh, the, the, the reduction of crime. I really need to 
educated by our, 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 our provincial commissioner of why so many uh, key strategic areas in, in, in the plan, which I suspect might not be achieved. The other issue is the issue of, um, of, 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 of Operation Upai Mula. There is a number of, 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 of um, indication by the, by, the, by the presenter that we managed to arrest a, a number of offenders um, during Operation Upai Mula. I will also be interested to know that whilst we are doing some arrest of wanted criminals through Operation Ukaimulau, what happens at the station level? Because this station must also be able to do uh, um, arrest and not depending on Operation Ukaimulau. Yes, it is important that we get these operations on, on a weekly basis, but it should not be the only activity of the police in order to address the, the, the crime challenges in our in our province. So I really want to know uh, that you've given us statistics in terms of the arrest through uh, Operation Ukraine now. When are we getting the statistics in terms of the daily operations of our stations in that in that the other issue I'm worried about uh, rape, sexual offences, uh, general sexual offences in our province. We seem not to be winning in that particular area. There were, there were times at some point that there was a decrease in terms of rape in this uh, in this province. And I don't want to remind you when, but uh, looking at the statistics that were just presented to us, it seems it's a, a, a an area that you are unable to to actually um, win as, 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 as a province. And instead of decrease, we actually, actually see a, 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 I think a, 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 but you also need to look at goal because percentages can actually fool you. Whilst we have a, a, a 2,000 number and the decrease is 2.4, you'll think that you are actually doing something and actually are doing nothing. Race is a very serious challenge in our province, and general protection of health is a serious challenge in our province. We are not, uh, 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 I, I didn't feel it, when we went a intervention program was presented to us that we are actually focusing on crimes committed against women and children in this um, in this province. You know, I wish we can actually use the same um, um, strategy in dealing with some of the some of the crimes. For example, the crimes, uh, the business crimes, uh, cash and etc. Et can 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 person? Can we ask Member Maulubane? I think there's just or somebody for the raid in the background. We can't hear her questions anymore. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can hear you, but there's a noise behind you, Honorable Sizagel. Okay, fine. I'll try and move away from the, from the noise. But do you hear it? again? Um, let me try and use a. Okay. Uh, Chair, can you hear me now? Yes, Honorable. Thank you very much, Ma. Yes, uh, yes, in socks. Yes, in so bulala because now I forgot. And was on Bopa for remedial. I want to back on our field now. We'll have a meeting in. Um, but what I want to send coach you a little for the issue. Uh, what I wanted to show, Socks, how can you be so cruel? Okay, Chair, uh, let me come back. I've, I've forgotten what I wanted to say. Sure. Thank you, Member. Uh, member Hoffman? Thank you, Chair. 
just want to get my screen connected. Thank you, Chairperson, uh, to everybody. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Um, I do think there's a lot of positives that, that came out of the presentation. I also want to thank our members um, for working during this uh, trying time with COVID. Um, I know it was not easy. Um, I do appreciate uh, seeing the offices outside with Kai Malau and all the other projects that they are running. And I'm sure that it does have an effect uh, on crime within Gauteng. With that being said, uh, Madam Chair, I do have a, a few questions, um, stuff that, that I did not pick up and, and stuff that uh, may be um, uh, that I want to scrutinize. Um, I first want to start with the underspenditure. If you look at the percentages of underspending, it, it's nothing. It, 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 it looks good. Um, but if we look at the actual amount that was not spent, it's uh, more than 22 million rand that was not spent. I do see that it's attributed to procurement processes that was prolonged in, I think, the um, buying of vehicles. And I do understand, um, you know, that the procurement sometimes do take a long time. But I do think that there's a a real frustration under police officers on the outside working um, with regards to, to vehicles and uh, the maintenance of vehicles and the procurement of parts and, and thus more. Um, and that is really um, with every individual um, police officer I have ever engaged with, that is one of their main concerns is the, the state of the vehicles within Gauteng. So with the, with regards to that, the 22 million uh, rand that was then underspent becomes a problem. And I think, uh, you know, we should just uh, look at that and see if we can better our processes. I do think that um, in government we are, um, and even within SAPS, uh, there's prolonged uh, processes um, that actually undermines what we are doing here. Um, with that being said, I'm stepping off that. Um, Madam uh, Chair, I want to quickly uh, talk about the, the SAPS buildings, the illegal occupants in there. Um, that is also, um, that's a frustration. Um, then civil claims is another matter um, that is really concerning. Either um, our police officers aren't educated enough in, in the, the Procedures Act with regards to arrests, um, and, and that is what it's about, or it's just a power play. Um, I do know that there's uh, multiple attorneys and stuff um, getting a lot of money out of the South African Police Department with regards to this issue, and I think uh, we should look at this uh, more prominently and with a vigorous eye. Um, then, uh, Chair, I have not seen anything about police firearms that's lost or ammunition lost. I would like to see uh, something about that. Um, also, I have not seen anything uh, or mentioning of the truck burnings. That's uh, quite a pertinent um, area, uh, a problematic area in these last few months. Um, then also concerning to me, uh, Madam Chair, through you, is the forensic backlog um, and the shortage of uh, forensic analysis, I think, was the, the reason giving, or given um, for, for the forensic backlogs. Um, I would like to, to, to hear um, how many cases in Gauteng is affected. And then uh, further to that, if uh, those ana uh, analysis uh, were um, employed, is this problem resolved or is it an ongoing uh, problem? Um, then also, Madam Chair, through you, um, I would like to know how many um, operational and available helicopters there is um, in Gauteng for operations. And then lastly, Madam Chair, through you again, uh, firearms. Um, I want to propose and ask if, if, if this might help the SAPS. Uh, can there be two processes run simultaneously? One for the amnesty seekers and one for normal firearm applications. 
because this whole backlog and this uh, thumbling of, of, of applications now um, has an adverse effect on normal firearm applicants and uh, puts them back uh, a few months, um, and that's problematic. These are worrisome that the 90-day directive is not adhered to, and the 60% of firearm applications have not been resolved. It is furthermore problematic that the SAPS itself puts an unsustainable administrative burden upon themselves. We have seen numerous instances where SAPs do not adhere to their own directives or do not understand their own directives, this leaving good people without a way to defend themselves. This in itself is a crime against the human rights of counting people. And I close. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Member Hoffman. Member Segerton. Thank you. Very, very much, Chair, and uh, a warm congratulations on your new appointment as Chair of the Community Safety Committee, and I uh, sincerely wish you well. Uh, so wh what we had noticed on the, on, on the stats uh, mentioned today is, well, is that things that happen on roads have dramatically increased. Uh, a stat like cash and transit heists having increased by over 106% was mentioned. I believe truck, truck hijackings are up by over 31%. There was even talk of theft out of motor vehicles. Uh, but especially looking at the overwhelming increase in, in cash and transit heists, uh, I would like to ask, do the police know if there's some kind of, of, of syndicate, perhaps, operating in Gauteng? And uh, do they do they have you know knowledge of uh, something like that? Because it would it would suggest you know that something that is that is heavily coordinated is going on for it to have increased by so much in such a short space of time. Uh, even yeah, and you, you know if it's and if it is a syndicate, perhaps is there maybe an inside job? Uh, too, in some of these of these uh, cases, and you know, uh, do our police have the right intelligence to be able, in terms of you know, crime intelligence that they receive, to be able to tackle these cash and transit heists, or or are, is there something afoot maybe to improve the uh, intelligence that the police does get, like say maybe receiving anonymous tips, but it does you know strongly suggest maybe there is some kind of syndicate, or if not, maybe uh, an inside job. I would say definitely the uh, the truck hijackings are a, are a big cause for concern as well. Uh, we have proposed things in the legislature, like maybe making the Harting Traffic Police a 24-hour service, or because that falls under you know the Harting government and not necessarily SAPs. But uh, you know, does does SAPS have you know immediate plans in place to remove the crime that's happening on on our roads? And then my uh, last question would be: We also saw an increase of 40.5 percent of uh, sexual offences detected as a result of police action. In terms of that, and while on the one hand, I would like to commend the police very strongly uh, for actually. Uh, you know, doing their, their, their work, bringing these people to book because those offences were detected as a result of, of uh, police action. But it does, you know, show that there is an increase in our province and that perhaps the, the interventions to bring down these type of offences aren't working. And uh, does the police have any kind of new or, you know, radical approaches that it's taken already or approaches that it will bring to bear uh, to bring this stat down? Uh, thank you so much, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Member Shackleton. Member Kanyide. Thank, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, let me start with uh, the report, the annual report as presented, and I'm moving from the premise that we are discussing a report which, which is almost one year old, because in the next few days, it would have been 12, more than 12 months late. Uh, but also I'm moving from the premise and uh, maybe the, 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 the PC, when he, he responds, he can comment if I'm correct, that uh, the audit of this report, the annual report, is normally a national competency. So we just got 
the aspects of the audit that was done for the province, I mean, of the report that was done for the province, it might not be audited separate. I just want to be clear if I'm, if I'm correct with it. And Chair, if I, if I ask some of the questions that have been answered, please bear with me because at some stage, it, the presentation when it was made, uh, the sound was not very clear, but I'll, I'll ask them anyway. The first question, Chair, is that uh, I realized that visible, visible policing uh, had a underspending, underspending of about 28 million. In percentage term, it's about 2.9% uh, 2 or so, but, but if you look at it, it's about 28 million. I just want to be sure, if they say that it's it's, it's because of the process involving payment of procurement for vehicles. Are they saying there are delays in paying for the vehicles? That is paying, paying, paying the, the, when they procure the vehicles? Or they are saying the procurement process itself, like the there's a delay in processing the whole thing. Uh, because I'm asking this question because I, I, I thought, does that mean that they've got a problem with the 30 day payment which is required? Or does 30 day payment not affect the police? A 30 day payment of the service providers. The next question, Chair, is just to find out about the proportion of personnel to population size. There is a there is a term that is being used, I've forgotten it, maybe the PC will remind me, or of, of uh, the percentage, the number of police per population that should that should that is allowed. My question is. The target that they had set for the year, for the previous financial year, was it based on that formula or it's just a target they set? And if it was based on that formula, it was not based on that formula. If it was not based on that formula, uh, what was the reason, are the interventions that can be made towards that in that regard? The next question, Chair, is, is that uh, the, uh, the, 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 I just want to find out in the annual report, if the PC is able to comment on the, I've looked at the report, it doesn't say much about the role, what, what has been happening as it relates to the Metro Police uh, and their performance. Let me just tell what I'm trying to explain. What I'm trying to ask is that my understanding is that the police, the Metro Police are supposed to submit some of their plans uh, to the PC for, for processing every, I think at the beginning of each year. And I'm under the impression then that at some stage, the PC has a capacity or is obliged to also make an assessment of progress there. So I just want to get a sense if I'm correct. And if, if I am, uh, is there a reason why he didn't give us that assessment of whether Metropolis, they are really meeting the targets that they are supposed to be meeting. The next question on the annual plan is that uh, I, I, I realized that there were problems experienced around social or difficulties in meeting targets or problems encountered on crime in social, in areas like social group, it can be some melody. And when I looked at interventions plan, I didn't see specific uh, interventions that I, maybe I might have missed it. Can the PC just indicate if I've missed it or they are still going to be developing intervention plans for this difficult police station like social group, it can be some melody. The next thing that relates to annual report chair is about the focus. Uh, the, there has been an accusation that the SAPS is unable at the police station level to, to interview and record uh, cases of uh, sexual offenses. Uh, I, and I, our, my question then is, given the annual performance plan that we have, that have been, that has been, uh, the annual performance uh, report, so annual report, so annual report that we have been, have been submitted. I just want to find out if, uh, uh, does the PC feel that there has been a lot of improvement in building the capacity of the police to be able to handle those cases at a police station level? And the last question related to the annual report chair. I just want to find out the number of vehicles that the PC is referring to. Does that also include, uh, we know that in the, in the recent, the committee was told that there's now introduction of mobile police stations. Does that number also include those mobile police stations? Now to come to crime stats, Chair, is that uh, the, the, 
I, I think I must welcome the fact that the, the crime states as presented also go to an extent of helping us understand the case ready and some of the conviction. It's important because it then makes us understand the impact that is being made. But my questions are the following. Uh, I just want to find out that the report that we receive on the quarterly, uh, uh, on the on the on the state for that quarter, does that include the arrests that were made by Metro Police? Uh, because I, if I understand correctly, and, and, and you can correct me, PC, Metro Police can can arrest people, but they can't charge them, so they must bring them to the police stations. And does that the, the report you've given us also include that? I had your com the next one is I had your comment on COVID in the infections. I just want to find out uh, when the stations are closed because of infections, what happens? Uh, they are closed. Is then a, 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 a police station open temporarily? Or, 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 or what happens? Uh, what, what, what contingency? Because I'm worried that some stage you said there are more than 100 stations. I think it was in March or, or, or in December, something. I don't remember where, where they were affected. What happened? What, what were the contingencies that were there? And also related to COVID, if these are the numbers, uh, are there any, what, what do you think is the cause? I mean, it could be that maybe when, when, when people come to report cases, that's what happens. But I'm saying, is there a way in which you're looking at, at, at stepping up prevention measures? Or I know that uh, some of them are about washing your hands and all that, but is there a way in which you are trying to see how we can step up some prevention measures? The next question on, on, on crime states is about the school safety. I heard the report about uh, patrollers being the responsibility of the department, CPFs and all that, I heard it. But I'm under the impression that the SAPS has a responsibility of vetting of the of patrollers. I just want to find out if the PC can just give us an assurance of, of, the, of the capacity of the police to do that because if they, that if that is that is not that is lacking, there's, there's a possibility that the patrollers who are getting might not be able to do the work they are expected to do. Lastly, chair, and I think it's related to the question that was raised by Honourable uh, Kosima Loban. I realize that there's a there's a there's a new strategy called GGT uh, five year strategy. It's growing halting together five year strategy, and I understand that is linked to the growing halting together uh, 2030, 2030. But what I want to ask is, how does, and maybe the, the MEC can also respond to this. What is there a link between this strategy and, and, and what we were told is deliverology, which has targets over two years? And if there is, what is the link uh, between the two? And let me just conclude with uh, 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 just uh, on a lighter note. I see in the slides, or that have, I think slide 53, the one that indicates the various uh, objectives of, of the GGT five-year plan. One of the one of the one of the strategic one of the uh, objective is written as corruption. I think they wanted to say anti-corruption. I think they should be going to correct it. Uh, thank you very much, Chair. Yeah, th thanks, members. Can you uh, Before PC can answer, can I take if there are any questions from uh, MMC Butler and uh, Le Hote? And TG Masilela, only th only two minutes. If you do have question, uh, members, is Do you have, do you want to do a follow up in terms of what we wanted to say? Sitswalo. Yes, yes, chair, I do. You do. Okay. Over to you, members, is After that is Sitswalo. My sincere apology, chairperson. I was actually um, uh, disturbed by by by. Kanyile, but I'm happy that he raised some of the issues that I wanted to to raise. The one that I want to raise, Chair, uh, is the issue of school safety, particularly 
uh, butlery in, 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 in those schools. And I'm, I hope that the PC, when you respond, you'll actually be able to tell us what are the statistics. Because if you go to all schools, we were visiting schools in, in January, almost every school in Gauteng, particularly those with smart boards, they've been butlered, or those with um, uh, IT centers. They've been backlit and everything has been taken. And what they've been complaining about is there is no police follow up. You know, there's no proper investigation. Schools are not being informed, et cetera, et cetera. And I suspect because uh, that information is not properly captured, we might not be getting proper statistics in terms of what exactly is happening in schools. The schools in, 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 in Ivory Park, uh, Alexandra, as well as... Um, uh, deep Sloot and uh, in the deep uh, Tartan in, 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 in the West End. All of them have been complaining about co a police response and also after they've responded, there is no information that they get from the police about the cases that they've opened and everything was stolen and even if the things can be replaced, uh, they will come back again and steal them. So I just want to check that if you indicate that there is school safety, does it include, except bullying, drugs, uh, et cetera, does it include the issue of um, break-ins in, uh, in those schools? And what is the strategy to deal with those challenges? Because government have invested a lot of money in, in those assets, and it seems they're not actually working for our, our, our children. Instead, they're actually crossing the borders to Zimbabwe or some in, in some in some way else. So can we can we just be informed uh, by um, the PC in terms of the strategy of what is it that is being done and are schools involved and community safety uh, forums involved in terms of making sure that the strategy developed uh, it does actually work. Thank you. Thank you, Member Sisegele. Uh, I saw the hand of member Sisualo, Sisualo Moja. Three minutes, ma'am. Hey, thanks, Chair. I also want to welcome the report table by the PEC. And also, I'm happy to be invited by you, Chair, in this meeting. Uh, I've got only two uh, uh, questions. Uh, I saw the slide that talks about uh, the the firearms which were missing and also numbers of who, how many have been recovered. I just want to know whether where was this uh, 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 arms, firearms uh, uh, missing from? Because we normally know that sometimes it can be inside job of the police or outside the community come and take whatever. If the report can elaborate further, where was uh, 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 this firearms recovered from? The, 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 the second question here, uh, Chair, is the issue of the police to be, uh, you know, to be welcomed by the community. I'm saying this because on the 23 of, of, of December last year, a three-year child was stabbed seven times, and the mother also stabbed eight times. He, she died instantly on the street whereas the child died on the way to the hospital in Kahiso. As we speak, the perpetrators was given an, a bail he's outside without informing the, 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 the family of those uh, kids. When I ask the family, says the police says there was no enough evidence. I don't know which evidence they were looking for because the people were stabbed with a knife. They saw it when they came to the scene. When, and also, why if the person given a, 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 a bail or whatever, they don't have a courtesy to go to the, to the, to the family who are grieved to inform them that this person is going to go out. Even today, the police never go to that family and tell them what is happening, Chairperson. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Ma'am. Uh, can we move to, is there any hand? Because I want to hand over to Provincial Commissioner and the MEC. Uh, members, is again a member, so lower your hand, please. 
Are you fine, Chairperson Masilela? Okay, thanks. Uh, can I move uh, Provincial Commissioner? Those were the questions and the comments raised. Then I'm requesting your office to answer. Before that, before that, PPC, before that, I saw that Masilela's hand is up. Chair, can you raise it? Masilela, I give you only two minutes. Ndate Masilela, can we jump you because you are no, your, your mic is no longer showing us that you want to talk. Uh, over to you, Provincial Commissioner. Thank you very much, Chairperson and honorable members. Just let, let us appreciate the kind words and the support uh, given to us as law enforcement agencies. It gives us courage to can soldier on against all odds. Working in a difficult situation of the COVID uh, uh, environment, when everybody is locked or deprecated in their private space, we are expected to be out there. When people are being discouraged from touching each other, we are forced, obliged to can touch people. Because there's no way that you can arrest people without touching them. So going back to the issue which um, Honorable Member Madubani, Sizakel Madubani, uh, um, raised about the burglaries in schools. From the 1st of March until the 22nd of February, 1st of March 2020 until February 20, uh, 2021. A total of 1,356 schools reported that they were burned, backlogged, theft, damaged. And out of the three were burned, 1,342 were burglaries, two reported theft, and 12 malicious damage to property, and we have arrested a total of 222 suspects, whereby 157 of those suspects are going through the court, and 12 of those of some suspects are already convicted for those uh, declarations and damages at our schools. Yes, we know that um, they are taking advantage because of some of the schools are vulnerable, they don't have the physical security infrastructure. Some, they don't even have the security to can guard in those schools while they are keeping uh, valuables in those schools. So working together with the Department of Community Safety and obviously our TPFs, we are trying our level best to can uh, uh, protect those assets and those infrastructure. But also, it is the responsibility of the communities around those schools to can protect the, the, the schools. So led by the school governing bodies, must mobilize the communities, the parents, and everybody around the school to protect the schools. Obviously, we as the police will react once the crime has been committed. Coming to the issue of fire and missing, where do we recover them? Obviously, we recover them from the criminals. Uh, when, when firearms are stolen, during our operations, we'll pick up criminals in possession of illegal firearms, we'll arrest them. And when we go through that firearm, checking them using our system to can check, check the originality of that firearm, some may be established that these firearms are firearms belonging to the state or others are the firearms which belong to private citizens. And, uh, I'm not in a position to can comment on a specific case, uh, 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 Chairperson and Honorable Members. The issue raised about the case in Kahri, so surely it's a matter which requires us to can go back to the case docket and look what is in there. 
before we can comment on that. Uh, because I won't be aware with uh, each and every case docket which is registered. But we look into it. If our officers, they didn't uh, give the family a progress report, surely it's a concern for us. We'll correct it. And then uh, 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 surely that case it will require us to deal with it separately from this platform. Um, going back to the issue by Member Kamile about the capacity to vet, uh, to vet the, the, the patrollers. Yes, uh, we, we are screening them. We are not vetting them. We are screening them as the police. We go through our uh, assistance to check whether do they have uh, criminal records and so forth. But anyway, we also have the state security, which can also complement us in case of we are having challenges in, the, in that regard. Coming to the issue of contingency, when police stations are closed due to COVID, uh, police stations have identified uh, a facility not far from the police station, uh, which is normally being used as a community service center for reporting of cases when there is a case of COVID at that particular police station to give uh, the people who are appointed to do the decontamination to do their work. And after certain, certain uh, uh, hours, then we return back to the police station. And then we continue with our services. So our communication uh, uh, component, they, they, they do a steady job in terms of informing the local community of when the police station is closed and where uh, 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 the community service center is shifted to. And even at the main police station, the station commanders, they do put uh, some members who will wait for any time who's coming to the police station and redirect them to where a, a new service center is open. The question about whether the arrests by a Metro Police are they included? Yes, they are included because all cases, all cases of crime are reported at the police station. So we are the custodian of these crime statistics. So the arrest effected by whether by the traffic or the metro or so whoever. Once it's brought to the police station, then it will be captured as such, and we will account on that. Whether the vehicles which uh, uh, were hampered or not delivered in time, whether it does include the mobile CSC, the answer is no. Um, the mobile CSC were not part of that. The measure with regard to those um, uh, 12 heavyweight police station, especially those who are still stubborn. Uh, the plans we are having, since we have managed to can reduce crime in other uh, heavyweight police station, we will soldier on and continue to implement the current strategies which we are having until we get it right in this remaining police station. So interventions are in place and we continue. And we all know Ivory Park, Mamilori East and Tembisa, it is difficult by its nature through its uh, environmental design. It's a challenge in terms of policing those areas, but we continue to soldier on. We will end up getting it right. Surely through the assistance and the collaboration and cooperation of the communities we are serving. Coming to the issue of uh, accountability of the metros, the Department of Community Service, Community safety, they do have the session whereby they call all law enforcement agencies in the province to then come and account on their performance and so forth. Surely we do have our own uh, engagement whereby we check whether we are performing and so forth. But the report of the metros are being delivered. Their annual report are delivered in different platforms, not through the SAPS. Coming to the, the, the proportion or the capacitation of those stations, uh, uh, you were asking uh, which, uh, which system are we using, uh, whether it's ratio of uh, 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 populations and so forth. No, in the SAPS we use what we call it the THRR, and then the stations which we refer to, uh, they do have, uh, uh, we do have the ideal 
figure whereby we need to capacitate that police station to that figure. So we were reporting that we didn't achieve that, but we did put some resources in that particular space because we want problematic police stations to can to can to can um, uh, uh, have resources at least above the ideal figure which is normally used uh, because it will be difficult obviously to can have hundred percent capacitation of each and every unit in the in the in the province or in the police due to limit of limitation of the resources. Uh, coming to whether it is nationally audited, it is true. Uh, we report here, but uh, head office they audit everything for us. Uh, going back to crime happening at the road and hijacking of the CITs and whatever by honourable me member Settleton. Um, yes, we are aware that you know criminals are using the road, they are using vehicles to commit these crimes. And um, uh, whether do we have any knowledge of the syndicate? Obviously, our crime intelligence is hard at work trying to can identify the groups which are responsible for uh, committing these cr uh, crimes. Um, the, the example of those yesterday, the intervention there, it was through inter uh, intelligence work. Even the previous uh, interventions whereby we managed to can find criminals while they are still focusing and doing all this work. Uh, it was through the intelligence work. So our intelligence community, they are doing their best to ensure that they infiltrate those syndicates and they also ensure that they give us the, pro uh, the proactive intelligence so that we can act before these criminals, they commit crime. Um, CIT, it is a problem. It is a challenge. The member asks whether there is an inside job or whatever. You may have all strategies you may think of, but once you have the insider threat, all your strategies will be in vain because the very same people whom you are working with are the very same people who are colluding with the criminal. So we do have instances whereby um, uh, uh, there is an insider threat, and there are cases which are going through court, court processes whereby some people within the industry were arrested for, for planning or for also being involved in the CITs. There are also members of the service who were arrested for colluding. Some, they were part of the robber. So the insider threat, it will remain a problem, but with the help of our intelligence community, we'll be in the position to can, to can continue to uh, 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 deal with that. Sexual offenses um, increased due to police uh, uh, detection by police section. It's a positive note. Police acted on those things, and that is why it went up. So that one is a positive note. It's not a negative one. The negative one is all those sexual offenses which went up, like a rape, all sexual assault, and so forth. That is negative. And the question was also asked whether um, uh, uh, how are we going to deal with those ones? It's a societal problem. Surely domestic violence is a social societal problem. GBV is a social societal problem. It cannot be left in the hands of the police to can deal with it. We all have the responsibility to can deal with it. It also goes with the behavior of people. So the behavior of people, it means it requires all the activists you can think of in the community you can go out there and change the behavior and the attitude of the people, the perpetrators of this criminality. So I will, I will urge all of us to can work together with law enforcement agencies so that we mobilize all the communities against the perpetrators of gender-based violence. And as the police will also do our part when these crimes are reported so that we act and we act decisively and we bring to book those who are responsible. I think the presenter also made mention of the life sentences which were given to those who are responsible for, for these offenses. They do get heavy sentences. Our courts are on board. They are working together with us, social workers and everybody else, ensure that uh, the perpetrators of these crimes are dealt with. Coming to the matter raised by Honorable Member Hoffman, 
uh, the two prong approach in terms of the am amnesty and the new and the renewal of uh, licenses. Yes, it's something which we have adopted. We must deal with the backlog. We must also deal with the new uh, renewals. Uh, just yesterday, we were also discussing this matter to say that we need to, uh, to put members to work extraordinary on time to can ensure that they deal with the new application and also deal with the renewals because we do have a lot of people who are applying for this uh, uh, licenses uh, and as you know the population of counting is it's, it's huge and there is many people who are applying we can compare the applications which are received by accounting with other provinces uh, you realize that you are dealing with the volumes. But we have discussed the matter. We do appreciate your, your view. And it is also our view that we must deal with the backlog. At the same time, we must also deal with the renewal. And the issue of the amnesty, there are measures in place, the processes whereby we are capturing uh, uh, and also test firing of those firearms, analyze the results, and do everything so that it can be ready for destruction. Going back to the issue of the helicopters available in the province, I must repeat, because this question comes coming again when we were giving this report, that this, it remains a national competency. A win is a national competency. We as the province, we are just a user of those helicopters. But in the province, we do have three helipads. Actually, it's, yes, it's three helipads, the Johannesburg, the Pretoria West, and Bonnerburg. So we take advantage of what is available there as and when we need them so that we, we, we can utilize it for operational uh, operational purposes. But it remains a national competence. It doesn't fall under the problem. The banning of trucks, yes, I fully agree. It's a problem. It's a problem that just emerged suddenly. Firstly, it was uh, 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 intensive in Kwazul Natal. It came over to our space. We do have a plans in place whereby we are monitoring this thing, working together with the stakeholders also, um, uh, uh, trying to can mitigate this threat. Also in that one, we do have a problem of insider threat because some of the, the drivers, they just deliberately leave the truck in a vulnerable area so that it can be banned. Reasons, reasons known to themselves, but we call it an insider threat. But it's a concern for us. We do have measures in place we can deal with it. Now that we also have relaunched our highway patrols, they'll be monitoring all those routes which are highly affected. And coming to the hijackings of trucks, um, yes, it is a concern. But according to our uh, uh, how we, we put together the, 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 the our current state, it includes the delivery trucks, like your rams, your OLEGs, all these Molanyana delivery trucks. Once it's been hijacked, and it is categorized as the hijacking of trucks. Also on that one, it has become a, a challenge recently, uh, but there is a very strong involvement of an insider threat, uh, insider threat in that one, because you'll find that a truck is delivering, a delivery van is delivering valuables. When it go and stop at the gate of a client, it's being accosted there. So one will ask a question, how did criminals knew that I've ordered something and wait for this truck when it stops at my gate and start accosting it? So there is a high level of insider threat in that regard. But we are working very hard to continue with that one. Also our intelligence community, we are hard at work dealing with that. The issue of the forensic backlog, yes, it is true. It is also a national competency. I think um, uh, also the portfolio committee uh, uh, nationally, they've also deliberated uh, uh, on this particular matter. And there are some other recommendations which were given to the national commissioner and the team and the divisional commissioner of forensic so that it must be implemented. We expect that the situation it will improve soon. Coming to the issue of illegal occupation of SAPS buildings, uh, it is a concern, but we are working very hard. The people who are occupying these things are the members of the city, but these are the members who are not qualifying to occupy those houses. 
Uh, it may be the barracks, it may be the merit quarters and so forth. So as we all know, the challenges of removing, so if, uh, evicting a person from, uh, from, from those houses, it's, it's, it's a very laborious process, uh, which takes long time, but we are waiting on that. So these are not strangers, these are not people whom we don't know who are occupying that, those houses and barracks. Uh, the issue of the civil claim, yes, it's a concern. We do educate our members, we do brief them that, you know, let us keep, <coughs> let us operate within the ambit of the law. Let us also not play in the hands of, of those who want to uh, make money out of our negligence and, uh, 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 and carelessness. So we are encouraging, encouraging our members on a continuous basis, and where members, they deliberately, deliberately and through their uh, gross negligence, uh, you know, uh, broken the, the prescripts and end up uh, causing civil claims against them, uh, against the organization. We do have processes in place to ensure that those members are taken to task. It is a concern, and that is why it is prioritized so that we work on it so, and, and, and we reduce it completely. Well, the issue of the underspending, even though it is within the threshold, the, 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 the underspending uh, for that period under review, it is within the threshold as allowed by the Treasury. But surely we don't want to, to, to understand, we want to use our money. Unfortunately, it was beyond our control that we end up not uh, uh, using that particular money because of the uh, procurement processes. Surely we do accept and agree with honorable member that we need to have the better processes uh, so that we should not understand. I fully agree with that. Um, I've dealt with the issue of uh, um, uh, uh, crimes against women. Uh, I've dealt with that one. And then coming back to the issue of station uh, uh, Okai Mulao and day-to-day -day operations and so forth. Yes, the stations, they do have the day-to-day -day operations. Uh, if we can include the successes which they have achieved here, I think um, there are many, there are many uh, uh, which they have achieved. And they do have the small scale operations on their own. At time stations, they cluster together. You find that neighboring stations, they cluster together. They have their small scale operations. And then we focused more, we spoke more of the large scale operations whereby it is being conducted at district or at provincial level. But there are many operations which are being conducted at station level uh, uh, by the station commanders. Yeah, um, coming to coming to this other matters of the delivery logic, whatever, I'll leave it to the NEC to can talk to that. But we, as the province, together with the Department of Community Safety, we identified certain objectives whereby we felt that we need to deal with this uh, with this issue. So plans, and we are hard at work trying to can ensure that we do those things. And we do have the support of the uh, provincial government, ensuring that where it is expected uh, 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 from other departments you can also do certain things. They are also held accountable for those activities. The good thing about this thing is that uh, 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 the executive, they don't regard it as a sole policing plan. They take it that it's a plan whereby all government departments are involved and responsible to can fulfill their legislative mandate. So there is a lot of dependencies. We do our part, other departments they also do their part to ensure that we create a safe and secure provincial uh, 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 province uh, county. Uh, Honorable Chairperson and members, let me quickly check with my colleagues, uh, the deputies, whether there is anything they want to add. No. Okay. That's why that is our submission, uh, Honorable Chair. Thank you. Thank you.
Provincial Commissioner, MEC, MEC Mazubugo. Good afternoon, Chair. Good afternoon, MEC. I can hear you, MEC. Yes, Chair. Chair, let's acknowledge uh, the opportunity uh, that the provincial commissioner was able to table the quarterly statistics uh, chair and uh, appreciate that uh, all efforts are being done. Just today, we're also presenting at the budget committee, premier's budget uh, council, and uh, we have uh, agreed that uh, meaning the council has approved that we need to establish the command council and that we must fast track in ensuring that so that then crime fighting in Gauteng becomes a priority and we further requested that maybe they must also uh, give us money to be able to buy Nama drone and uh, strengthen the CCTV cameras that are existing in Gauteng. So hopingly after we have tabled our request, some of the things might happen. I'm sure PC did indicate that uh, they received cars, so we'll be giving them the balance of the other cars uh, because BMW is the one that is supplying the cars, including cars for visible policing, um, uh, chair and, and honorable members. Um, and in our mobile police stations to be able to to police those areas that are not accessible. Gradually, Gauteng becomes a very problematic area because if you go to Brazzaville there in Atridgeville, it's right on top of the mountain. Obviously, uh, SAPS cars, immortals, guys, so it means even the purchasing of the next batch of cars must take that into consideration. In fact, we were joking that we need to buy them bikes now, so that Bazogazungen, uh, they, they must get helmets for themselves. So, Lilonka, uh, Chair, we appreciate that uh, uh, this opportunity was given. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, MEC and the Provincial Commissioner and uh, the team for coming and present to the committee and also respond to the questions and the issues which were raised by the committee members. So we will request all the stakeholders together with the MEC and the PC and the team that you are released. Thanks for coming. Uh, see you next time. You are released. Only only committee members will remain so that we finish the business, our business of the day. Thank you. Thank you very much, honorable chair, honorable members. Bye, chair. Bye, bye, MC and uh, PC. Bye, 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 Proko. Uh, members, can we continue with our our program for it for the day? We are moving to the presentation of the research analysis of the Department of Community Safety for the third quarter. Then I will request the the researcher. Power Law to present to us the research analysis of the third quarter. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Members and colleagues. Uh, Chair, with your permission, can I go straight to program performance or should I go through the introduction? Don't you have a summary of the introduction and go to the... Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, basically, this is the third quarter analysis 
of the this is the analysis of the third quarter report performance report of the department of Gauteng provincial legislature it is expected that at this time the department would have ex would have financially spent about 75% of its uh, financial allocations and also making also demonstrating its probability of meeting all the targets for the year under review for the current financial year rather uh, moving over to program one uh, Tabile, can you please assist 